Hallo und Willkommen to Frankfurt for England versus Denmark. England's second game of the group stage and Denmark's. And an opportunity for England to book their stage in the knockouts before the third group game. Um, but they won't have it all their own way. Denmark will be looking to exert some revenge. Of course, England and Denmark met in the semi-final of the last Euros at Wembley Stadium, where the Danes felt um, very hard done, hard done by, possibly with some justification, uh, when England were awarded a late penalty for uh, a perceived foul on Raheem Sterling. Um, I thought it was a penalty at the time in the stadium, but I haven't seen it back. And I will take their word for it if it was very soft. And, uh, you know, pod nothing I could have done about it, to be honest, but... Um, you know, you win some, you lose some. England, as you'd expect, are the favourites to win this game, uh, as they are for most games. In fact, they were the pre-tournament favourites coming into this Euros. Don't know if they still are. Um, but Denmark, unlike England, have won the Euros, of course, back in 1992, when they um, actually failed to qualify. But due to uh, Yugoslavia's dissolution after they qualified ahead of them, and uh, the outbreak of the Yugoslav Wars, um, which was overall certainly a negative. Lots of people killed, displaced, and a genocide. But um, in, a, in, a, in a twisted sort of way, benefited Danish football, as that was their crowning moment when they uh, upset everyone at Euro 92, including the Germans. And uh, yeah, unlike England, who... Um, have reached one final of the last Euros after beating Denmark in the semis, uh, but were unable to get the job done. So, um, yeah, there's a lot balanced on today. Uh, England do have a better record overall in these games, England versus Denmark. Uh, 13 victories, uh, five draws, I think, and four defeats. So, But in the last three meetings, England have only won one. And uh, that was at the last Euros. And the two before that, they drew one and lost one. So. You know, uh, the Danish seemed a little bit pessimistic coming into this tournament, but uh, the ones at the stadium, at least, seem a little bit more upbeat. I've, uh, I've seen a few Denmark 4-0 predictions, and uh, they seem sincere. What do you, what do you think the score's going to be today? 4-0, uh, obviously. Two. Denmark, of course. Yeah, well, uh, revenge for the last Euros, is that? Adam, do you know what do you know what that means in Danish? It means that is confirmed to shoot yourself. <laughs> what does that song mean in uh, English? It means that uh, you're good. But your girls are regular. Ah. Uh, okay, cheers. <laughs> but it's on the hat. You have it. It means it means four zero. Yeah, optimistic. You have obviously had a few too many of those. What's this? Danish beer. It's a sparkling water. Yeah, it's a sparkling well, these are clearly taking drugs because they're predicting 4 0. <laughs> Still getting over the Turkey Georgia game, fumes. Fun fact about Adam. Not me, I've got to give the fun facts. Yeah. Well, that's, that's self indulgent at best, Alfred. Uh, lives in Sydney, travel all the way here. Loves running. <laughs> Do you have any predictions? Sorry? Do you have any predictions for today's game? It's going to be a 1 1 draw. 1 1 draw? Yeah. Are you happy with that? It's going to be brilliant for them, like Yeah? Good? Yeah. I think the. Uh, how the game's gone your way? 1 0 to uh, Svinia? No, you're going up 1 0. Yeah. Fifty fifth minute. Seventy five. Seventy five. Okay. Thank you. It's gonna be a Andreas Christensen. Oh yeah. Sam, predictions for today's game. Well, I wasn't. 
I wasn't expecting it to come up first, but I'm going to go with 2 and to England. Saka in the 37th and Kane in the 71st. Of the minutes again after it came in last time. <laughs> it's going to come in at some point. Adam. Howdy. Predictions. <laughs> Ned to shit his pants. <laughs> Minute. <laughs> 24. <laughs> is, that, is that also when a goal happens he gets very excited? Yeah, I think so. I think there'll be a goal in the first half. I reckon... I'm going to go for 2-1 England. I'm going to go 2-1 England. I think, I think Hoyland might score first. England's come back in the second half after Gareth quells the critics like Ned, Ned Rico. Makes changes early after sticking with the original lineup from last week. And Gordon does a job, scores. Kane gets the second, 2 1. 2 1 England. Come on! <laughs> well, prediction, I'm not going to shit myself. Um, Bold call. I reckon 1 1, Barry Kane, first goal. 43rd minute. 43rd? Yeah. <laughs> so after you've. Huh? After I'd have predicted that you. <laughs> well, hopefully not, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We'll take it from there, see what happens. Um, so at this point, this guy tried to take my camera off me because he was convinced that it was a laser pointer and that I was going to try and blind Yannick Vestergaard. I took this photograph of him and me on it to prove that it was in fact a camera, but as far as he was concerned, all that I'd illustrated is that I had a laser pointer with a camera on it. Are they a thing? It was news to me anyway. Uh, take next to this. We're taking like... It's just a bit camera for taking photos of our friends. It's the same as a phone. He's been to four games, so... Yeah, this is my fifth game at the Euros. Then he called his friend over, this guy, who was clearly more of an expert on cameras, and determined that it was, in fact, uh, a camera. I was glad that we had that mystery solved, but said that they'd still have to confiscate it because it was a stick. I mean, anything's a stick really, isn't it? As long as it's sort of a bit long and thin, basically, you know, most things that aren't cube or sphere-shaped, it can be classified as a stick. A phone? Stick. Coins? Stick. A watch? Definitely a stick. A human? Effectively just a partially sentient stick. Anyway, in the end, when I took the battery bit off the bottom of it, and I don't even know what that does to be honest with you, it doesn't seem to give it any more battery life, they were convinced that it was no longer a laser pointer or a stick, and I was allowed to go freely on my way. Martin! I've been to this is I've been to a game every day. It's just a, for taking photos of my friends. You press that and it takes a picture of us so that we can have a selfie in the stadium. Yeah, but uh, that's a stick, right? No. no, it's this is this is a this is a battery so that it charges. It, it goes like that. It's just a little. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's just a little charge. Can we clear the camera? Yeah, it, it's, thank you. Good to see you. I'm joined by a Denmark fan. Are you looking forward to the game? Yeah. Yeah, you're optimistic? It, it, it will be great, yeah. I 
think it's. I'm optimistic. Yeah. And uh, you too. Yeah. Well, <laughs> a little bit. You know. Hope so. Are you um, a Danish fan hoping for some revenge after the last Euros, the semi-finals? Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, a lot of you felt that Sterling's penalty was uh, not a penalty. Is that right? Uh, we don't think so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And I'm also I'm interested to know uh, in in the uh, in the Nordic countries like Denmark you have uh, much higher taxes and a much larger welfare state than we do in the UK. Just wondering why there seems to be a lot of buy into that in Denmark that, that, that we lack in the UK. Uh, certainly in the post Thatcher era, sharp elbows we call it. I wonder why why you thought that was the case. Why the Nordic countries like Denmark have this attitude, or maybe you don't. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to say actually, <laughs> but we we used to have high taxes in Denmark, so I think it's uh, it's just the norm. It's the norm right now. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, here we are. The uh, what is normally Deutsche Bank Park, but not for sponsorship reasons at this occasion. Quick update: about 45 minutes to kick off. It's hotter than the sun. I'm dying. Not literally, I'm fine, but I'm very, very warm. Adam just laid out, laid out an egg and it fried. On, on my forehead. That's how hot it is. Uh, feel your breath. <laughs> God save our king. He got it right this time for everyone to find it out. Teams are changing ends. Nervous, Ned? Nah, no, 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 no. That could be your comic book name. Like, like, like your, your superhero, Nervous one. Ned. He was down. Change your boots. Huh? Change your boots. Change your boots. Well, that was all a bit dramatic if that's all it was. <laughs> These footballers, they don't half throw a strop when they've got the wrong boots. This man wore a suit and is now. He's overheat. He's actually melting. Looks like something's gone terribly wrong. England's first shot of the game. Phil Foden, well worked. Well worked, but poorly taken. Got to say, the Denmark fans are in excellent voice. They're pretty impressive. So yeah, they've travelled in good numbers for the last Euros, and that was mid-COVID. And I've just caught England fans finally getting going a bit. Oh, no, 
in case you're unestablished. Whoever doubted Harry Kane, eh? Christmas has come early for England and for Harry Kane. That was an absolute gift watching the replay. The fullback gets burned by Walker. Two players sort of slid, deflect it. It's a gift for Kane, isn't it? I'm not sure I'm missing them. Harry Kane definitely ain't missing them. <laughs> England's performance since going 1-0 up. I'll have to swear. Uh, yeah, mild profanity. You avoid Wang. the C word. I don't know, is that mild? It's one all, and you can't say that they don't deserve it. Uh, it was an absolute gift, just like ours was. Kane with an awful pass in midfield. I can see what he's trying to do, spread the pitch, but it was terrible. And uh, one all. A good finish. Uh, I don't know there's much Pickford could do about it. But yeah, deserved one all and England go again. Hopefully, hopefully that's the kick up the arse that England need because they need a kick up the arse. It was Morton Hulman with the goal from uh, 28 metres out apparently. Reached a speed of 114 kilometres per hour, obviously. Uh, and in off the cross, uh, the post, so yeah. The shot was fantastic. The shot was as good as England have been bad, but here we go. Curse of the commentator, we literally lost the ball as I said that. Also be said, I don't know if you can be able to see this. But the pitch is in absolute state. I'm not saying that's why England are playing badly, but it is a mess. What do you make of the state of the pitch now? Better, better or worse than England's performance? England. Uh, a Danish player fell over when trying to cross the ball and uh, because I'm very mature I said way. It's about to be half time. Uh, Denmark have been the better team. Um, probably deserve a one goal lead. It's one all as things stand. It's not been very good, really, to be honest. Uh, Kane looks off it again, even though he scored. It was a bit of a gift. Bellingham's really frustrated. Foden's probably trying too hard, trying to take on an extra man. Uh, yeah, it's not great. And that is the half-time whistle. And that is me very zoomed in, in case, just in case you were wondering. Yeah, it's one all Denmark better team. Uh, like I said, the second half's a bit better, unless you're Danish, in which case more of the same, please, you probably win. It's actually apparently Steve Bruce inside of that costume. I suppose he's not got much else on. Right, half time. Second half's about to begin. Update your predictions, Adam. Are we going to turn it around? Well, my prediction was we'll turn it down around for a 1 0 deficit. But I still think we're going to turn it around for a 1 0 draw at half time. Come on, everybody. Uh, predictions, any subs you'd make? Well, my predictions are on full course at the minute. I've not shot myself about Kate to score on 1 1. So. Yeah, not too bad. It's actually a bit of quite a good result for Ned so far. Yeah. I, don't, I think he's picked the right team. It'd be easy to maintain Southgate, but about time one of the players stepped up. Not that much talent. 
Southgate's fault. One of these boys can step up. Well, there you have it. First substitution on 53. 53 minutes. Gallagher for Trent. I get it. He wants a bit more bite in midfield. Maybe a bit more legs. But England have made a bit of a better start to the second half, so hopefully he can aid rather than uh, disrupt that flow. We shall see. Phil Foden has hit the post. I repeat, Phil Foden has hit the post. Uh, England is a substitute for Denmark. England have been much better for the first 10, 12 minutes in the second half. You feel a bit more optimistic? No. <laughs> what? They're not half time? Uh, I think it's still 50 50, mate. It's still 50 50. Your match is being replaced by Wayne, number 40. Feeling any more optimistic after the start of the second half? Yeah, definitely. Better start. Actually, controlling the game now. Great a chance, which is nice. Always nice. Yeah, it's better. better. England. There's a little over 20 minutes left and uh, Gareth Southgate has just taken off Kane, Saka and Foden, yeah, the front three. And probably three of the most nailed England starters most people would imagine. Um, I think Saka can feel maybe a bit hard done by, but um, the other two make sense. And Bowen made a positive impact, so uh, here England go. He's been accused of being too conservative, Gareth Southgate. He wasn't with his squad, and uh, he hasn't been with his substitutions today, but the proof of the pudding, as they say, will be in the eating. We're into the last 10 minutes. England have never really got going, regardless of the quite radical changes. Um, it's not like Watkins, Bowen, uh, or Reza have been bad. They just, haven't been able to get much of the ball, influence the game. England haven't been able to play through the lines at all. Struggle to get Bellingham involved much. And the long ball is just meat and drink for principally Yannick Vestergaard, who's a giant. But there's still eight minutes of normal time. You never know. We've just gone into injury time, of which, well, the board said three minutes, but up there said four minutes. So, three and a half minutes, probably. Um, nothing, nothing's improved, if you're wondering. England have been quite bad. And Denmark have been quite good. Um, and it's still one all. Three minutes. Oh, there they go. It's definitely three minutes they've corrected it now. It's worth saying that given England won the opening game, a draw isn't the worst result in the world, but the manner of the draw, the fact that Denmark probably should have won, the vibes are all wrong. The vibes are bad. They definitely need an improvement in the last group game. Did you hear those vibes? They are bad vibes. But there's one, maybe one last attack. Full time. Full time. One all. Just leaving the ground. Bit of an argument in the in the friendship group. It's a Southgate in versus Southgate out. Yeah. The very strange thing is, England are now on four points. No one else in the group is on uh, more than two, which, so we have twice as many points as anyone else in the group. Uh, four points basically guarantees qualification, so England are basically qualified now for the knockouts. Doesn't really feel like that. Sort of feels like we just got drubbed 3 0 or something. And it was bad. England do have quite good players. Better players than Denmark. 
but yeah. First one. We'll see. It, it must be said, uh, German trains and the transport to and from the stadium leaves quite a lot to be desired. Sam, out of ten, how would you rate the? Funny out. How would you rate the trains and the uh, transport to and from games? One. One. I was all high on the Germans having it smashed from the train situation, and they've really let themselves down over the last few days. Frequency. Not angry, just disappointed, really. Just Same disappointed and angry. Yeah. I mean, they see quite a lot. Of I don't like to use language like this, but uh, it is suboptimal. There's no other word for it. I do just need to emphasise that German trains are really, really bad. Terrible. Abysmal. Just like no trains have gone in any direction. At all. It's really bad. It's almost as bad as England's performance. No, actually it's worse. Uh, we just stayed at the station, uh, as we have been for a while, waiting for the uh, extremely inconsistent German trains. Uh, I'm joined by two England fans uh, who describe themselves as being battered. <laughs> uh, what, what are your names, sorry? Ian. And Jacob. Uh, Ian, what did you make of the performance today? I think uh, like the first 20 minutes we obviously, as usual, got over-optimistic that it was an easy beat and then they scored and then it was a typical Gareth Southgate performance and we struggled to be able to break him down and it just it's really really hard to come away and watch him play like that that's Jay what do you think of the uh, the changes the substitutes were quite radical taking off Kane Saka and Foden all in uh one fell swoop. What did you think of I, I that? I back it, right? I think Watkins needs a chance. Like, Cobby Mainu also needs to get to play. Like, if they don't, the youngsters don't play in this, like, second round, they're not going to play later in the tournament. So I feel like we're just going to be, like, dreadful going forwards. Is there anyone you drop specifically for? I think uh, Trent shouldn't be playing midfield. But again, like, Cobby Mainu's not got enough experience, so I don't think Gallagher should play. And I'm a Chelsea fan, and I don't think Gallagher should play midfield. So I think that says a lot. But I get it. Cheers, lads. Well, after a period of time so long that it could be quantified in evolutionary terms... It's been... 84 years. German trains finally got us safely back to Dusseldorf, and by that point, I'd completely forgotten about England's terrible performance. There are two ways of interpreting England's start to Euro 2024. On the one hand, it is extremely similar to their start at Euro 2020, when they ended up reaching the final and very nearly won it. The opening game was a cagey affair, which ended in a 1-0 win against Croatia in 2020 and Serbia in 2024, and the second game was a sluggish and underwhelming draw, Scotland in 2020 and Denmark in 2024, leading to a wave of negativity. Kyle Walker said after the game that while England weren't at their best, Denmark were semi-finalists in 2020, England didn't lose against them, and they are still top of the group and still on course to progress as group winners. He also said that tournament football is rarely as comfortable or as packed full of emphatic victories as some supporters seem to routinely expect, and there is a lot of truth to all of that. The group stage is all about getting results, progressing, and preferably winning the group in the hope of getting an easier draw. Anything else is a bonus. Italy only narrowly won against Albania, France weren't exactly comfortable at any stage against Austria, Portugal required an injury time winner just to overcome the Czech Republic, and Belgium actually lost against Slovakia. So, on that front, I wouldn't worry too much. Something, to me at least, feels different about this tournament to 2022 or 2020 though. It feels to me as though there are too many uncertainties and unknowns. There has been a lot of changes to the squad since the last World Cup, 
and indeed, since England's Euros qualifiers and recent friendlies. England have an abundance of excellent ball players who like to receive the ball to feet, but a dearth of midfield destroyers, natural sitters, left footers, and runners in behind. We have seen Southgate try to fix all of those problems by playing Trent alongside Rice rather than Wharton or Maynou, for example, Foden on the left, so there is at least one left footer on that flank with Trippier behind him, even if he rarely plays on the left at club level, and the introduction of Ollie Watkins in place of Kane against Denmark. None, really, have worked though, and I'm not sure that Gareth Southgate knows what his best team or system is at this stage. As my friend Sam said in that video though, you can't put all of the blame on Southgate. Football may be very tactical these days, but England have supposedly, and I think genuinely world-class, or at least elite players in several positions, who ought to be able to produce better performances than the one that they did against Denmark. So, uh, I'm relaxed because in the grand scheme of things, none of this really matters, but I think there are bigger question marks than there have been with England at any tournament since 2016, and whilst the personnel dictates that they could click at any time, or even grind out wins without fully clicking, I would be lying if I said that I was confident that things will imminently fall into place. In fairness, I did say all of this before the Euros, but I was sort of hoping that I'd be proven wrong. Anyway, I'll be at the Slovenia game, which I think England have to win to top the group because I expect Denmark to beat Serbia, so here's hoping that we get some kind of a reaction. Unless you're not an England fan, of course, in which case you probably hope England lose or just don't care, which is also perfectly understandable. That is it for today's video, but thank you all very much as ever for watching. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments, and of course, it goes without saying at this stage, make sure that you are subscribed and have notifications turned on not just for this channel, HITC7s, but also my second channel, Alfie Potts Armor, both of which should be about to appear on your screens now, along with a couple of videos that you might fancy watching after this one. You can also find me on Twitter, Instagram, or threads via the username at HITC7s on all three, should you wish to do so, and all of those links plus a whole lot more should be down in the video description below. Cheers.